Hi guys, welcome to our live today. I'm really, really excited to get started. Um, we're going to be talking with Charlotte Sternkind today. Um, she was my postpartum doula during my first um, pregnancy. So I was really into Ayurvedic medicine and um, Ayurvedic healing and I learnt about through preparing for birth of my first son about um, the fourth trimester which a lot of people just totally miss and the fourth trimester is something we're really trying to focus on um, educating you all about and um, I want to share my story today about what happened to me during my <laughs> during my um, my labor and postpartum. I almost died giving birth to my son. Um, and I was so lucky to have Charlotte um, there to really walk me through postpartum healing. And she was my postpartum doula, which is something I highly recommend every woman to have. Um, you really need to, it's kind of the most important um, trimester or most important part of the whole journey of pregnancy and postpartum is is postpartum healing and postpartum care so um really wanted to talk to her today we will be giving away um 10 uh support waist trainers which we sell on the bump suit um website i um i'm going to link that here as well We are going to invite Charlotte to join us live and we're going to talk about postpartum healing and the support waist trainer as well is not only for postpartum, you can also use it for shapewear or support if you have an office job. And here's Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Hello. I'm just How trying to organize you? Great. This. Yes. Take your time. Okay. Hi. Hi, it's so good to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So everyone that's watching, I wish you all could have a Charlotte in your life. Um, wow, you're an absolute angel and really just, oh, I feel like crying just thinking about the support that you gave me after the birth of my first son. And I wish that I could have had Charlotte for my other two babies, but I was in Los Angeles and Charlotte's located in Texas. So um, we're really trying to give, offer you guys support. So you, Charlotte has a network of postpartum doulas um, and offer you guys support for postpartum if you're in other parts of the world. So um, Charlotte, do you want to introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about what you do? So, the magic I... that you do. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet to say that, Nicole. So my magic looks different for different people. I'm Charlotte Sensony Sternkind. I'm an instructor at the Center for Sacred Window Studies, where we train other postpartum doulas consciously to take care of moms. And um, I'm, I'm actually a licensed massage therapist and... Uh, I teach the body work portion of that. And mm -hmm. uh, Nicole, if I may say so, you were under my hands also in postpartum. Got those Absolutely. lovely oil massages. Yes, and uh, that's called Abiyanga. Abiyanga? Yes. Uh -huh. And Abiyanga is a hot oil massage or a warm sesame oil. You use other kinds of oils as well, right? Right. Depending on the mom's um, presenting circumstances. So typically postpartum is what we call a vata time, which means lots of changes are going on and, uh, you know, both in the mom's body and then trying to integrate that new family member in also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, yeah, and then sometimes if it's your first baby, well, then the partner's also in there going, wow, look at this little person we have <laughs> in the home. So, yeah, yeah 
I try and help the transition be a whole lot easier. Absolutely. And with the Abhyanga massage, it really helps with um, nourishing the body and also mm -hmm. um, lymphatic drainage. So really, if you've had, you know, I had a home birth, but if you've had a hospital birth and you've had an epidural or any kind of drugs in your system, um, that Abhyanga massage really helps to release all of those um, all of that swelling and that's caused from, and also when the milk comes, the breasts as well. Mm -hmm. I remember you doing a lot of work around cause you get so engorged when your milk comes in and it's so painful. Um, Charlotte really, or, you know, having that Abhyanga massage really helps that, the, that ease. I remember just being like, don't touch me. And then you would just kind of do the Abhyanga and it would just be such a relief. Right. Wow. Yeah. And that massage, um, it's super, super light, you know, because um, we actually, like you were saying, Nick, we are moving the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. so, and it's amazing, you know, because 70% of that is located directly underneath the skin. Yeah. And just by gently moving the skin and we try not to do deep or vigorous kind of massage because that's just going to send the newly birthed body off. Um, what I mean by that is um, it can be too intense. The chakras, if you know that term, the energy centers of the body are wide open after giving birth. Mm. And... Um, uh, so that's why we're super, super gentle in everything we do. So, yes. Yeah. And also, um, so we talked a little bit about the massage. What about, can we talk a little bit about the diet? Because the postpartum doula, Charlotte, also, she prepared all of my food for me. So there was no outside food that I was eating. My husband had to hide the Texas barbecue from me in the fridge. <laughs> But um, I remember just having these nourishing foods, nothing cold in Ayurvedic, um, everything warm, her cooked with, prepared with herbs and spices that help your body, your womb retract. Will you talk a little bit about um, the diet during postpartum? Sure. So the diet, um, like Nick was saying, we step up gently. I don't know how many of you have actually given birth, but it's super intense. And what happens is the digestive system actually shuts down. So all the power, all the energy can go into birthing that baby. So when the digestive system is shut down, we work on gently rekindling it or boosting it. Um, making the digestive fire stronger again. So diet is um, largely very soupy initially with mm. high protein, um, small little beans called mung beans, or you can use lentils because um, the smaller the bean, the less gas it produces, you know, and uh, you don't want that gas getting into your own body and then potentially getting through your milk into baby. Yeah, right, like, which can cause problems for the baby to be gassy. Right, right. So that's the thing that a lot of women, you know, there's so many things you can learn during postpartum with, with diet and just self-care that can really help your whole family and your newborn. Yeah. You taught me so much about that. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's so wonderful of you to say because... I never can tell how much a um, parent that I serve remembers, you know, because like I said, it is a totally new time. And sometimes the mama brain that happens when you actually change the part of your brain that you use, going from this logical thing to more yeah. intuitive mm -hmm. and, uh, that's, you know, what helps you manage what's happening with yourself and with the baby and feeling into what the baby's needs are at that time. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, so getting back to the diet a little bit more. So yeah. we off very simple. And uh, for, for Nicole here, I made like the traditional Ayurvedic stuff to start, which was a very soupy kind of um, bean dal soup. Um, and then some white rice with extra ghee, which mm -hmm. is clarified butter, if you don't know what that is. And um, I even mentioned in the blog that typically newly birth parents need a little bit more fat in their diet or, well, okay, let's say truthfully a lot more fat. Yeah. So <laughs> it's okay. You don't, you know, you don't put it on, you actually burn it. So you do, you burn it. And um, like I was saying in the blog, you are also providing the food for your baby and the brain needs good fat to grow. So, uh, you know, yeah. so you're feeding the baby and you're replenishing your body and your own nervous system with that. And uh, just it, you come out feeling happier. And it's even known that women um, who have low blood fat lipids um, are more susceptible to postpartum depression and blues. Interesting. So, uh, yeah. So that's why we add that in. Yeah, absolutely. That's really important. Yeah. And then as the weeks go on, we start to add in more veggies. It's kind of interesting, the veggies that we favor at first think things that grow in the earth, like carrots, um, asparagus that, you know, grows underneath and then just kind of pops up. But asparagus is also favored for its rooting qualities. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot to bring some heaviness. Like right now, I mean, I've used the Halloween pumpkins that people have had on their doorstep and I have chopped them up and cooked them. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, you know, because things like um, a pumpkin pie or even mashed pumpkins or mashed sweet potatoes are yeah. so grounding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eventually you'll get stepped back up to where you can handle things more. And when moms are later in postpartum, it's like, that's when you start suggesting, well, maybe we're talking six, eight weeks here down the line. Um, okay. Do you, are you craving this food? You know, the greens are something that you crave to replenish the iron in mm -hmm. your body. And um, uh, then it's like, eventually you'll get back to your salads and your lighter fare and stuff, but well down the line because we want everything to provide a little bit of heaviness and uh yeah absolutely yeah. and then you know occasionally i do run across a um birth person that um is feeling a little too heavy and mm. rather lackadaisical so sometimes we do need to boost with a little bit of white pepper or ginger nothing too spicy because spicy is going to elevate the fire element in the body and it also elevates babies. Is that the right? fire? The pitta, the pitta. The fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when baby gets their fire elevated, well, they're going to be a little bit um, vocal. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why my babies are so vocal. Ah. <laughs> They may I remember, be naturally that. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I, I like, like to, um, now I like to eat just so much like chili and ginger and garlic and onions. And I know like in Ayurveda, mm -hmm. especially post um, birth, that's just not really recommended. Well, ginger is a marvelous digestive element. Yeah. So we do add that in a lot of the foods. Yes, right. And um, also... It helps um, as ginger tea with maybe some lemon in it and then mm -hmm. whatever sweetener. Well, when I say whatever sweetener, generally not honey. In Ayurveda, yeah, in Ayurveda, you don't want to put honey into a cooked product 
or a very hot tea because that is kind of gummy then and it becomes less digestible. So right. we recommend like a brown sugar or maple syrup or something like that. Have you ever tried agave nectar? I use a oh, lot of agave. Absolutely. Yeah. Love agave. Yeah. Um, you used to make me these little date bowls, I remember. So oh. delicious. Yeah. Um, those Charlotte, are and a lot of dal, amazing. But Charlotte would make me these beautiful um, dishes and my family would steal them all <laughs> That's it was, it was too um i remember making an herbal um spice ball also with dates and coconut and almonds in it and uh the that was supposed to be eaten over time to yes with mom's emotional makeup and mom served it to family that came by that afternoon and it was all it was gone all gone I remember yeah. this chia pudding you made and my family just ate that like straight away oh some kind pudding. of oh maybe no it was like pearled something a pudding um yeah so some moms I'll make like tapioca tapioca pudding. that's what yeah. it was tapioca what did I say chia no 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 tapioca pudding that oh, wow Really quite wonderful for the mm. vegan parent you know mm -hmm. um because the what we call the slimy element uh yeah. cloud, um that's present in chia and okra you know okra is actually also a very favored food because of that quality because it's a binding and it helps pull you together so uh, yeah and yeah Speaking of pulling together, you know, that's what inspired yeah. you to form this company. So, yeah. So, um, so after working with Charlotte and then I also had a postpartum doula in, in Los Angeles and, and Charlotte wrote a beautiful blog on the bump suit website. So if you want more information and links to, um, literature or contacts, if you're pregnant right now and you want to experience the gift that is a postpartum doula. That was actually my gift to myself was to have a postpartum doula because it's really the most valuable thing you could have as a new mother. Um, Charlotte also, so a postpartum doula will also help you do laundry for the baby, help with the housework. In Ayurveda, they believe you should stay in bed for two weeks. So they really help just with the family. If you have other little ones, um, they just come prepare your food, help, help out a little bit give you a massage and, and leave. And it's yeah. just, it's magical. So Charlotte's written a blog on the Bump Suit website, which all of you can access. Um, but what we really want to talk about is something that, you know, I think the waist trainer in general these days is seen as this aggressive body shaping um, device. And um, it sometimes can really have a not so positive connotation and at bump suit we developed the support waist trainer which was modeled from my understanding of ayurvedic um, postpartum rituals the binding of the of the womb abdomen area which is not necessarily a um you know um what's the right word i'm looking for it's not a a beauty thing it's not to get your body to snap back necessarily although it does really help that it's to help take all the vata, the air energy out of your body and to ground you kapha in the earth again, and to really assist your organs moving back into place and to really help support your core. Because after you have a baby, you're really, you feel like you're going to fly away. It's all this weight that you've been carrying over time, which is just, you've gained, you're gaining this weight for, with the baby and all of the placenta and the fluids. And when you release that, you feel literally like you're gonna take off. That's something that nobody really talks about. And so you really need something to help ground you again. And um, I really wish that I had the support waist trainer for all babies, because this is something that's so light. It's a compression band. It's not a classic waist trainer. Um, you put it in your hospital bag. Number one item to put in the hospital bag is the support waist trainer. And it's a compression band that you slide over. It's not aggressive. It's not abrasive. And uh, you can do it as 
soon as after birth as you feel comfortable with, even during a C-section. Um, I put mine on 24 hours after and in the hospital and I walked out. I mean, the feeling that it gives you is like you're a superhero. Like you can do anything. Breastfeeding, it helps with your posture. It's just like this magical item that we are so lucky to have developed. And um, it's great for postpartum, but not only postpartum, just for in general as shapewear, if you have an office job, if you have back problems, people are just loving this product and wearing it. And I wanted to, you know, um, Charlotte and I have discussed the support waist trainer, which is more of a compression band, but I also wanted to show you guys the new um, waist support waist trainer that it's the Velcro waist trainer, which we launched two days ago on the website. And this is for a mom that doesn't really want to slip the compression band over her body. This is more adjustable. It's, um, it's, it's thicker. It's more supportive. So I would recommend having both. You know, the, the support waist trainer you can sleep in. It's comfortable. It's great for right after birth. The Velcro waist trainer is more for adjusting. If you want more support, it's, it's more... Um, it's got a lot more, more girth to it. So I'll show, I'm going to place my phone down here and show this new, um, it's the Velcro waist trainer, which is available on pre-order right now. Um, they're going to be dropping in a couple weeks and we have it in black and beige, but it's got more aspects to it. So you basically, let's see if I can get in view here. <laughs> basically wrap it so it's different than the and you can stretch this and it's a one size fits all and you can just basically wrap your body in it already I feel like I could run a marathon that feeling that you get <laughs> and then you can have that extra support by these two and it's really flat to your body um it just offers this great amount of support after you've had a baby or just in general when you're working out as for fitness and um I just found it so great for breastfeeding holding my baby it's like your core is just so um it just feels like jelly right after mm -hmm. you have a baby and so this is kind of the easier version of when in Ayurveda they bind your stomach in a very old traditional way. Yeah, I mean, this is so much easier than the old traditional way, which typically the grandmother's saris were donated and cut into strips. And then you got wrapped, wrapped, wrapped like a mummy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do still teach that way, but when you have this kind of product or your original support waist trainer that you can just slide right on mm -hmm. um, that really a lot less binding which yeah. is what you want early in postpartum and ideally you know you want to wear these certainly when you're vertical and out and about in mm -hmm. early postpartum um, we do well, I do prefer to keep parents at home, but it's not always possible. <laughs> it was so hard. You like get into bed. I was like, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. 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 So certainly when you get more active, you know, wear the one that Nicole's modeling right now mm -hmm. and, um, you know, throw your shirt over it if you want to wear it external on your, your full bump suit or whatever. Yeah. You know, this we, is, I mean, I just didn't want to get naked, mm -hmm. but usually... You would yeah. wear it straight on the skin. It's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, from the standpoint of being able to put it on yourself without help. Yeah. Awesome and ideal. And Absolutely. comfort. Because if it's not comfortable, I can't get any parent to wear that. You know, so. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. These are super comfy models for that. Definitely. Yeah. And streamline, like the, the, the compression, the support waist trainer is literally just a layer. I wish I had it here today, but it's our bestseller, but it's just a, a double layer with zoning in it and it offers so much support, but it's really thin. So you could wear it. I wear it under my jeans. I remember even wearing it under my denim shorts and a, and a t-shirt. 
Um, I still wear it to this day. When I come into my office, I wear it under a bump suit. Um, it's just, it just makes you feel so strong and so supported and it's just great. Um, this is a thicker, more compressed version that's adjustable. So it's, it's really good for more, as you said, more active and right after birth and, and to really customize yourself. Um, that's a, a super good point you just made, Nicole, because, um, there are other times in life when you become more vata. Um, mm. In the perimenopause, you know, a lot of people say that postpartum is practiced for that time. You know, Interesting. Um, yeah. So this product could absolutely be marketed then also, mm. or you just save it, you know. And uh, we do have a lot of women saying to us, uh -huh. I am, I'm five years postpartum. Can I still mm -hmm. use this product? And we're like, absolutely. We have women that are, you know, women that need that, that core support. Um, and absolutely. And all the reviews are on the website. People use it for so many different things. It's not just postpartum what we created it for. I mean, even for me, I'm two years postpartum and I'm wearing these things every day. Um, in my workout, I wear it if I just need that. My, my key word is like, it makes you feel like a superhero, especially as a mom when you're having an off day and you need that extra boost. It's like getting a, it's like, it's like when you just feel crappy and you haven't done your hair or makeup or anything. If you put the waist trainer on, it's like getting a full makeover. That's how different you feel mm -hmm. not having it than having it. It's like, now I feel like I can show up as the best mom and best woman that I can possibly be just by having this extra core support, which is, which is really interesting because it's, it's, it's like a handicap, you know, it's like having this extra, I don't know what, what is, what in Ayurveda, how do they describe, what does this do to the body? What is the essence of it? Okay. So what I was saying initially is postpartum is a time of rapid change. So times of rapid change, um, whether you're maybe challenging a new job or you're physically moving um, mm. household or whatever, um, these can also be times of rapid change. And right now, the seasonal shift actually is a vata time, happens in spring and fall. So when leaves are falling and there's more wind and yeah. coolness. So this can help in all the times that are cool or cold and through the winter. Yeah, and maybe you don't want to wear it so much in summer, but uh, you know we wear much lighter clothes down here in Texas in summer. We do, so, uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, you maybe know, this so, is the winter version, and the and the support oh, waist trainer is the summer version. Absolutely, could be. Yeah. So, um, Vata loves compression. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you've ever um, had a pain in your elbow or your knee and maybe worn a brace or carpal tunnel uh, while you were pregnant and you wore a brace, those are all compression tools that mm -hmm. help Bata feel better. So emptiness and pain syndromes are two of the primary Bata um, things that are displayed. So uh, it can help yeah and it's, really it's definitely not our grandmother's corset it's so. not i mean yeah it's it's so comfortable and just so easy to put on and adjust it's like i don't know it feels really great i love it now i feel not so great <laughs> it's like when you get used to these things it's really just you just want them all the time um, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to like, really thank you for your time. I, I think it's just, you know, with these lives, we really want to offer the bumpsuit community, um, access to things that we 
have learned about or experienced ourselves. And for me, Charlotte is like my top three things that I would like, that would be a gift to give to our Bumpsuit community. Um, I value what you do so much. And Charlotte now is a really good resource. I know that she won't be able to help everyone personally, but she has a community of women um, that do what she does, um, same field, and um, can offer her services. Uh, Charlotte, her email should be on our blog. If any of you want to reach out to her for any advice or some kind of connections, I know Charlotte has a community that's international. So I know a lot of our community is based all over the world. Um, she is an incredible resource, helped me so much. Someone I think about every day and I just really hope we can offer this gift to more women out there to have that support during postpartum. And um, thank you so much for joining us today, Charlotte. Really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, so nice to see your beautiful angelic face. Really good memories and good times for me. Um, thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge with our community. It's such a gift and such a blessing. And I hope we can do this more often with you. And thank you to our Bumpsuit community for joining today. And we will be reaching out to our 10 winners uh, to get to experience this incredible compression support waist trainer. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to everyone. We will see you in the future. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Charlotte.